In this video I'm going to be installing a quick fill battery kit for my two coach batteries and it's made by a company called Fillright. And the amazing thing is this is how the two packages came. This top package is a quick fill kit. The bottom package is the bulb that primes the kit or that fills the kit. Now I ordered these on Amazon and this is the worst packaging I've ever seen or I should say lack thereof. I mean this is not packaging. Funny thing though, this came in relatively unscathed, but this one was all beat up in the box. <laughs> the uh, quick fill kit will set you back about $75. Uh, the kit itself is about $55 from Amazon, and then you got to buy the bulb separately. Um, seems a little bit uh, pricey, and I suppose it is but they tend to work pretty good. So the problem I have with my coach is the two batteries. I can't get the two of the cells very easy. So this way I'll make it a lot easier. Now, the funny thing about this is, look at this. This is just poor, poor workmanship. Made in USA. And yeah, it'll probably still work, but I think what I'm gonna do here, see they just, cheap packaging and this is what happens. I think what I'll do is I think I'll cut these off. Um, I guess you got plenty of plastic uh, tubing. Cut these off and then reinsert them here on the two ends. Okay this is uh, for two batteries. Uh, should work on 24 to group 24 to group 31 uh, batteries and basically the way that this works is you have uh, four caps, two for each battery, and you replace the battery caps with these. And then, uh, as you can see here, and we'll, we'll go out in the RV and actually show it to you, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time to, to go over here. There are three possible configurations for this. Kit A, which is for dual battery. Kit B, which I don't have, is for a single battery. And then Kit C is the filler. So you need either kit A and C or kit B and C, depending on how many batteries you have. Or if you have more than two batteries, then you can use any combination of kits A and B, uh, depending on the batteries you have, because uh, you can, on these manifolds here, you can just keep adding and adding. Well, as part of uh, installing the battery watering kit, I'm going to uh, replace the batteries uh, because these are about four and a half years old and I'm going to clean this mess up because it is kind of a mess and hopefully I can uh, repaint some of the battery trays and things so uh, just might as well you know if you're going to get in here and tackle this stuff might as well try to uh, do the best job you can do and fix what it looks like needs fixing. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to remove the uh, terminals we're going to take the batteries out and then I'll do a little corrosion control. Now as I'm removing these cables, I'm marking them one, two, three, and four so that I can get them in the same position when we're done. And when you remove battery cables, you always remove the negative first and put the negative back on last. And the reason you do that is for safety. Because if you were to remove the positive first, the negative is still connected to the chassis, so if you inadvertently touched the chassis with your wrench while you're taking the positive cable off then you could short circuit so negative off first on last well looking inside here it doesn't look too bad but this is kind of a gem they put the main distribution for all the different battery leads right there and the battery could slide into it how cute is that so I think what I'm going to do is get a little block of wood and put the block of wood down here at the bottom so that the battery can't slide into, into that because that could just punch a hole in the battery as easy as can be. Otherwise it doesn't look too bad. Um, these concern me a little bit. They're a little bit green there so I may have to replace these someday. So we're just going to Try to do a little corrosion control here, and then we'll get the new batteries in, and then we'll get the watering kit in. I cut a piece of uh, marine grade polymer called starboard, 
king starboard and uh, it's going to mount right in here like that and we'll put a couple screws in it and that'll keep the battery from hitting that post right there. In order to get these batteries in, the first one has to go in and then slide all the way over to the end and tuck up underneath there to have enough room to get the next one in. And then they both slide towards the center. And so now we have both batteries in and tightened down securely. And we'll continue on with uh, wiring uh, the batteries back. And I'm going to do some corrosion control on the ends of these here before I put them back on. Now I'm using this battery cleaner made by CRC along with a brush to clean these battery ends. And basically you just spray some of the scoop on here. And then just take your brush and try to clean it up. And let me show you, here is a before. And then here's an after. And you'll notice all the uh, wires are nice and bright copper, where before they're all kind of corroded looking. So I'm going to do that to all these terminals before I install them. Okay, I've got uh, all the batteries connected and I double checked them. I also took some red tape and taped this lead because it was black before. I taped the red leads. And now I got battery terminal protector. And I'm just going to squirt a little bit on each one of them. Just like that. Okay, now I got the batteries installed. I'm going to get the watering kit and install that. I happen to have uh, one of these 10 inch door holder things. So I just um, used it here without a end on it. And I can just set it there anywhere and it'll hold the door open so I can work on it. Just like that. So that'll work. While this really isn't a video on installing batteries, whenever you put batteries in parallel such as this, you should always replace both batteries at the same time. And you want batteries with the same chemistry uh, and capacity. So in other words, these are both group 27 batteries. The chemistry is lead acid and they're both 600 CCA. If you don't, if you put one new battery in and one old battery, the capacities will be slightly different and what's going to happen, especially with these being in parallel, is that one battery will probably discharge a little faster than the other and charge a little faster than the other. What that ends up doing basically is dragging one battery down to the level of the weakest battery. So always replace both batteries at the same time. Also, if you put in AGM batteries, you really need to have an AGM capable charger. Most RVs don't. So a lot of times people will put AGM batteries in thinking that they are doing better, yet they can actually damage them if their charger is not up to the task. So enough said about batteries. Now we're going to put the uh, watering kit in. Now these are the manifolds that I got to put in each of the cells. And these have valves in the end of them, so when the water reaches the proper level, it will shut off the water flow to each cell. That way all cells stay uh, full. So what we got to do now is we got to pull the caps here, put these manifolds in. So to put the manifolds in, it's basically pretty easy. You just take the old cap off. And then take a manifold. And you just press it in place as a cap. And as you can see, there's still enough room underneath here for this to close. And then when we get all four manifolds in, then we'll connect together with uh, hoses. So I've got the uh, manifolds interconnected now with the hose. And here's the end that goes to the pump. And that goes to this first manifold. Then there's a short tube here connecting to this manifold and goes through this hose to the third one and then another black short tube to the last one and this end is capped off. 
So normally you would just leave this in here like that for storage. I also put the uh, caps in a little uh, Ziploc bag so we can always keep them in case we either have to take our batteries in for exchange. I don't have to take the caps off uh, at the store. So now uh, to fill the batteries we simply hook our uh, end hose here to the pump hose and this is the pump hose. It just consists of a, a water filter on one end which goes into a bucket of distilled water and then a priming bulb, uh, a connector that connects uh, to this one. So to connect the two together you just simply push it in until it clicks and then insert the other in the bucket and start squeezing the bulb. And of course you'll want to use distilled water not spring water. And then the end of the hose goes in there and we start pumping it. And you can see the water going in and there really is no indication when they're full other than you can feel resistance on this bulb. So at that point you're done and you just simply disconnect and then put the cap on and then put it in the compartment and you're done. Now you can do that about once uh, every month or so whenever you think about it and even though these are new batteries it did take a little bit here because I did notice they uh, were down just a little bit so there we go this is the quick fill kit made by Flowrite.